In order to get up and running with a realistic lab environment, we need to roughly resemble a typical organization. A typical organization today leverages on-premises Active Directory. On-premises Active Directory is rapidly becoming a thing of the past, but on-premise user identities are sticking around for a while. For that reason, in this video, we're going to leverage Microsoft Win Windows 11 and Office 365 Deployment Lab Kit, a freely available self-deploying lab by Microsoft. To get access to this lab, all we need to do is head over to aka.ms forward slash Windows 11 Lab Kit. This will take us to the Windows 11 and Office 365 Deployment Lab Kit. And as you can see, we get an overview of the environment and it contains everything you need to get up and running with Windows 11 Enterprise and Microsoft 365 Enterprise apps managed by Enterprise Ability and Security. It provides a virtual environment including domain joined desktop clients, a domain controller, an internet gateway, and a fully configured configuration manager instance. Now, we are not going to be talking about configuration manager in this video. We're actually just going to get this and turn it off. We don't need this virtual machine for Intune management. So let's just scroll down to the bottom and we get some prerequisites. This self-deploying lab environment is based on Hyper-V and we're going to need the Hyper-V role installed. Other hypervisors will not work for this self-deploying lab. We need administrative rights on the device and at least 150 gigabytes of free disk space. It also says in this website that we need 300 gigabytes, but that's when you're using the configuration manager environment and we're going just to turn that off. It says you need a high throughput disk subsystem, which is usually SSDs rather than HDDs, but it will probably work even if you don't have SSDs. It mentions you need 16 gigs of available memory, but 32 gigabits is recommended. In this case, we'll probably be fine with 16 gigabits. You need a high-end processor for faster processing, which is generally true. Uh, it mentions that you should use a broad bandwidth to download this content because it's 22 gigabits of uh, in size. Scrolling on down a little bit more, and right at the bottom, it says Windows 11 VMs expire 90 days after the lab is provisioned. Now, that's provisioned by Microsoft, not provisioned by you. So this lab will actually expire 90 days after Microsoft uploaded it to their website. Uh, in my case, it expires on November 5th, 2025. For you, uh, this most likely will be different and you will need to download a new version when it expires. Microsoft will publish new versions on or before the expiration date. Scrolling back up to the top, simply a case of choosing download the lab environment. We need to enter in our details and once you're done, just click download now. Once you've chosen download now and it's finished downloading, you'll end up with Microsoft 365 device lab kit zip in your download folder. From here, it's simply a case of right clicking and choosing extract all and then choosing the place you want it to go. In my case, I'd like it go to the F drive under the M365 DLK. I'll choose extract. Once it's finished extracting, it gives you three files. There's a large file containing all the content, there's a setup file, and there's a zpack.exe. So all we're going to do is double click on exe and we're presented with a welcome screen. It mentions the process is next and it's ready to be provisioned. So just a case, <clears throat> so just a case of choosing next and waiting for the provisioning to take place. Once it's finished provisioning, we end up with a set of files and folders, and those folders contain the virtual machine configuration information in the file that contains the uh, hard disk image file. There's also some snapshots. Uh, so how do we use these? Well, actually, what it went through and did while we were using the provisioning process is it set up some Hyper-V virtual machines. So from your Hyper-V manager, you can see we've got some configured virtual machines. We've gotten client one through six, CM1, DC1, GW1, INET1, and VPN1. Now client 1 through 6 are Windows virtual machines. They're off by default and they are in various stages of configuration. We're going to take a look at those in a future video. CM1 is the config manager environment. Uh, it's turned off by default and we're not going to turn it on. If you like, you can uh, delete it or delete the source files. And uh, next we have DC1, which is the domain controller. And following that, we have GD1, which is the gateway server. And then the gateway server allows other virtual machines to access, access the internet. Let's take a brief look at how this works. 
From the host PC, we're going to right click and choose Virtual Server Manager. And we're going to get a few virtual switches that are already installed. We have external wireless, which actually is a virtual switch that I created prior to this video. The following two switches are provided by the lab environment. We've got HYD CorpNet, which is a private virtual switch, and HYD Internet, which is also a private virtual switch. The external wireless in this case is the only network with access to the Internet. So how do these virtual machines have access to the Internet? Let's take a look at the domain controller. We'll right click and choose settings and you can see we've got a network of HYD Corp net. Uh, that means that it doesn't have access to external wireless, yet we can connect to this computer. You'll notice that we do actually have internet access. So how does that work? Well, it actually uses the gateway. So if we right click on the gateway and choose settings, you can see that both the HYD Corp net and external wireless, these are, con these are completely configured by the lab environment and I didn't need to do this. So let's connect to HYD DC1. Upon connecting, as you can see, it says your Windows license will expire soon and you need to activate it in settings. In my case, when I'm recording this, I've actually only 22 days left before it expires. If this is the case for you, be sure to download the new environment when it's previously, uh, when it's provided by Microsoft. For now, I'm going to uh, choose close and uh, we'll take a brief look at the environment. We'll choose start and Active Directory users and computers and from here go to corpcontoso.com and take a look at the organizational units that are provided. We have a built-in and computers as normal and we have a corp which has been created for us, domain controls as usual and uh, users. Uh, let's go into corp. We have administrators, groups, service accounts and users. Moving into administrators, there are no items in this view. Users we have, test users 1 to 4. As part of this video series, we are going to change these users to something more meaningful so that we have, uh, so they are synchronized to Active, uh, excuse me, synchronized to Azure Active Directory later. Uh, they'll be a bit more uh, pleasing on the eye too. So if we uh, head down to users, uh, there are the default users that you get in a typical Active Directory environment. And in the next video, we are going to set up the uh, cloud environment and synchronize our viewers. So I'll see you there.